What's going on guys? It's T-Dog. Welcome back to another VOD Breakdown. Today we're going to be talking about the upper quarter final matchup. Team Heritage versus EDG. Team Heritage has been the China killer this event. They've taken down Dragon Ranger. They've taken down FPX. And today they take down EDG in another like dominant and like suffocating fashion. I feel like they were just all over them all the time. They didn't give EDG any room to breathe or play. And we're going to kind of see that on this first piss around here once we get into this. Now, Team Heretics, again, what I talked about when they were still in EMEA with uh, Mini Boo is they really have potential to make a run this year. And doing this with a, not necessarily a stand-in like Stewie 2K is for G2, but doing this with like their sub or their six man is like pretty impressive to me, okay? Uh, obviously, this has been recorded a few days after this has happened. I'm trying to go one uh, one game at a time. Some days I'll do double uploads depending on what's going on, but I haven't gotten around to it just because I've been a little busier. Um, they're currently in the upper final right now, getting ready to face off against G2. Or, I'm sorry, they lost to G2 in the upper semi, and they got dropped down. So, still a really good showing from this team. Um, almost being able to beat G2 and see in that upper final. They're now in uh, the lower bracket where they can still make a run and get back up to the top. So, again, we're going to break down today how they were kind of, like, suffocating and just, like, not letting EDG play at all. EDG is always running some interesting comp, and we're going to see that again here. They're running this double controller solo gecko. Um, I, I, I could... I. I couldn't wrap my mind around how this works, to be honest with you. Um, I, I, I think that this comp is really one-dimensional, and I think that's just extremely hard to play. Uh, I'm going to do my best to kind of, like, break down some moments of that, like, what I kind of see and, like, how I think when I say that. But, you know, let's just jump right into it here with the piss around. So, starting with, like, a little A-line control here, even trying to trap them. We have a camera out mid kind of waiting, and Heretex have actually flicked their camera out mid. They've done this a couple times before in the past. It's kind of like a little trap cam. But let's just talk about proactivity here, okay? Cam tagged, sees three people. Look at the rotations here from Team Heretics. 121, they got that information. And look at the movement. Look at the movement. At 113, they're top mid ready to fight with four people mid and one person market. They're just so proactive and they're just owning you. They're okay with giving the A line, right? They're okay with retaking that. They still have all their utility. They're okay if you pop B. They're trying to bait you into it. And that's exactly what EDG fall for here. They're going to try to speed up here, okay? Boo's going to slow him down with this elbow smoke. And now they're going to have to kind of like sit here and respect it. In that time, the rotations are going to come out from Team Heretics. They're short and they're spawn. Woo dodges the flash here, he gets two. Look at him live. Look at him live. He's not just peeking and fighting and dying. He's just jiggling out these angles, making sure no one gets close to him. And he's going to have an insane start to this map that's going to carry over not only into this half, but the next half and the next map. Haodong left in a 1v4, pretty much unwinnable, and Wu just face checking you. It's a lot of confidence to a guy you don't want to give any to. So here we are on the bonus, again because of that pistol specifically, and a nice anti-eco. What does Wu have online? A rocket, what's super hard to deal with, ults. So this is like a good plan and approach by Heretics. They're running a trap off of this camera and B-Main here, so as soon as this gets contact, he's going to rocket and try to kill whoever's here. They probably suspect it just to be Haodong in this situation, and I think that's why he so freely ripped it, is they saw that it was Cypher. Nade's going to come out. And do you see how Haodong barrel stuffs the rocket here? It's a very good strategy to use when you hear the satchel go off in the rocket because you have a very small window of timing where when he satchels, the rocket isn't ready to shoot. So even if Haodong were to do 120 in this situation with his Vandal, or if he had a Phantom and he did 117, okay, these damage metrics when you're barrel stuffing a rocket and he has to shoot it at his feet to kill you, it will usually splash back and kill him as well. So running at the rocket can actually be a good thing rather than trying to back up from it. Because the more respect you show it, the more space it's going to get and the, the easier it is to kill you. So... First blood gets traded out by Benji, 4v4, some layering utility gets dropped in here. Ryan makes a nice play, kind of just like being inserted into this bomb site. He actually almost hits a second one deke. Waiting on a flash, he dies, and now, okay, EDG are in the man advantage. What I don't really like about the way that they played this is how long they let um, Team Heretics like get set up and make a plan. I feel like they had the opportunity to just like move through this stuff fast and again this kind of like plays into that thing i talked about with the comp where it's like I, i'm just not even really sure like you know what what the point of even running this stuff is i can't actually tell how many stars he has on the line here 
We have no smokes left, no blind. I mean, at the end of the day, like this has to be some sort of like post plant like esque strategy where you know we could be doing sight smokes like this. And we have, a, we have a pull for the bomb if we need to, and we can all get out, and maybe we can, like, rewrap or something like that. Pretty confusing. I think almost 20 seconds are going to go by here before they make a play. So, slowly angling out. They know Patty was here. He threw a flash. The idea from Kong Kong is good. He's going to throw a nade. And this is just something that I, I just can't even believe is still in the game. I'm so sick and tired of all these, like, detailed textures and little fixtures all over the fucking wall. Like, it fucking matters. It's just total bullshit. I mean, watch the way that this nade is going to bounce seconds, nice like really like yeah that should be in the game thanks Th thanks for adding that just that super complicated just crap that lowers my fps oh, so the nade is going to miss it was a good play here uh patty was close enough he was going to get fucked over here but on the time of this omen blind when the tap comes in it has officially been 22 seconds since they had full control of the bomb site and knew it was clear 22 seconds and you don't reposition at all you don't make a play you don't triple walk push something and just now look at their spread it's just so newbie right one guy in the open eating util one guy planning unable to help one guy just making a play in his own smoke okay these guys are just going to do some super basic just you know play like this where they just work they just play together because they're on the bonus we lose kong kong chi chu's one hp and Smoggy's just angling out around his smoke, and he's just like, oh, well, that sucks. Really well played by Team Heretics. Let's back that up one second and break something down real quick. Look at the clock here, okay? So this is something we've talked about in the past called a gladiator protocol, okay? This is identifying your win condition and jumping on it. Okay, look at Boo. Do you see how Boo is running away? He does not need to be here, right? He's going to leave it up to Patty. You got the first 1v1, bro. Do your best to either kill him or stall him planning. So the fragment's on the bomb. Boo's going to run away. Watch how low the time gets here. So even if Smoggy were to win this 1v1 right now, okay, there's six seconds left on the clock. Boo has now repositioned over here. And he's going to be able to walk out on timing and kill Smoggy, who probably suspects him to be spawn or maybe around this pillar. So when you're in the man advantage like this and the time is against the enemy, you always have that option. You don't always have to 2v1 him if the time is so low. Remember, he has to plant the bomb. So you can kind of like wait for him to plant, send one person to get him off the bomb, and then he gets off and there's six seconds left. And then you send another person to get him off the bomb. And then you get him off and there's two seconds left and he's lost. So well played there. And just like a quick second to break down kind of like what I mean about like this like comp problem. Again, don't really think it's applicable in this situation. Um, the idea here is a lot of misdirection and smokes and mirrors since you have two controllers. Uh, you don't have like the Viper Wall and the Orb, instead you have extra smokes. And then Astra obviously can play like Perma Lurk, like fully separated the entire time because they have unlimited range. Let's just watch this B execute on a full gun round when there are no ults online, right? Kind of like the barest form of like even ground. Let's like see what this looks like for EDG. So they're going to go in here, they're going to throw a nade, they have to break this trip with their gun. They, man they end up doing it. And they actually walk into one here, but they break it. So they had to forcibly break both trips. The plant's going to go in. And with their utility expended, again, let's like look what we have online here. No nade, no more cages, nobody is dead, but he used his dizzy and he used his wingman and we used paranoia. We don't even have backsight control. So, again, just kind of unsure you know, why this is even being selected. I'm guessing, again, it's just like a comfort thing. And, you know, obviously they have it figured out in a system that's in place. You know, that's why they're the number one seed in the region. Uh, but just like really confusing, like, approach to this map, I feel like. So being that they can't get into backside and they have no layering utility, they're immediately going to get dropped into the 5v3 here. And, like, here's kind of like the goal of, I guess, like, you know, what this comp is, like, is supposed to do. So they have, like, these disruptive, like, sight smokes that they can use. Chi Chi's going to drop a star here for Kong Kong to play around, which is pretty pretty difficult to deal with. But with the, with the utility that's remaining from, you know, Heretics, this is simple. What, you know, whether they had this Omen Blind or not, they still have a Flash online. They'll have a Recon that'll come off cooldown. Okay, they have Satchels to break Crossfires, and they still have a Nade. I mean, this is just, like, super easy for them. Hong Kong is going to go one for one here. Benji's got three. Hat's going to come in. Chi Chi loses his gunfight. And this guy doesn't even have a gravity well to play the clutch with. So. This is a nice kind of double hold here while Rian's defuses. I, I just don't even think they have a chance. 
So we're not going to talk about the comp anymore here. Just kind of like the fundamental basics of, you know, how to play defense, how to play together, etc. Kong Kong is going to hide from this drone that Smoggy broke for him. He's going to re-get this line with a Nova Pulse popping here and a Paranoia. And he's going to be able to get a net of first blood here. And I'm kind of surprised that he opts to satchel away uh, when he still has his nade online. So let's take a look at this kill here. Patty's going to drop. I feel like he kind of needs to instantly go to this quarter and throw a nade on the ground, right? I'm instantly moving this way and I'm throwing a nade right here. And either nobody or Smoggy but can potentially make a play off that. He's instead going to opt to satchel away. So here's our 1v1. Here's our second 1v1. Nobody just face checking this. And then Smoggy's just like fascinated by like the cage here. So this is a nice job by Benji, the weak side player. When you are doing a split or a hit, okay, you have a weak side, okay, and you have a strong side. The weak side, their job is usually just to distract, right? Throwing the cage on the ground, making a little noise with their gun, taking a footstep, maybe faking a TP, okay? Multiple agents could be on the weak side. The strong side are the group or th with three or more who are making the play and taking the space. So again, on the weak side, you always kind of want to operate on like the success of the strong side. So like, again, if he saw two or three people fighting elbow here, absolutely he can come through this cage and look for a backstab. But since he only saw one, he knows he doesn't need to make that play. So that's a good job there by Benji. And heretics are going to go up in the 4v3 here, clearing out the bomb site slowly. The site smoke is going to be thrown again, just... You know, I, I just don't really think this is disruptive or, you know, makes them care enough. I think this just makes them choose to play for, like, the, the site or, like, the spawn area even harder. Notice how Team Heretics are just, like, panicking and planning. They're just, like, making sure that it, like, goes down. Dart spawn gets no tags, so they're going to take the space with it. Boo's going to throw a defensive smoke for, like, these lurkers, and he's going to jump in the bomb site, and he's just going to plant safe. No so literally nothing's happening literally nothing no utilities being used something is sus like they're holding like the open positions where the enemies are which would be like short a um elbow and spawn and it's just it's just super easy just one by one by one after closing out the uh, sunset map here team heretics are now placed on adg's map pick of split Really surprised to see this come out of EDG. Um, not 100% sure on how the ban phase went, but I think letting Team Heretics get on a map that they're as comfortable on as split uh, as your second choice is, is kind of a blunder. Um, we're going to see, again, Heretics play with confidence and be very proactive here and just accomplish a lot in a short amount of time. And I'm just going to try to continue to highlight how they are forever moving, how they are never just sitting on their ass, letting you, the enemy, uh, take space or deal with them or whatever it might be. Uh, so we're going to see that here on this pistol. EG are going to come out with some quiet ramp control. Contacting is very popular nowadays. Um People don't really like investing utility anymore, especially off rip, you know, especially when they can just find it out like themselves and to be simple. But look at the movement here, right? So we're going to get ready to do this heaven take. The nade flash is going to come through. The ping lands. Boo has a nice bait here for Patty, who's un un uncleared. Look at the movement now. Again, we're not like sitting around on like the far portions of like the map, right? Just like on the extremity. We're always in positions where we can just like capitalize off of each other. So the heaven refight is going to come in here because Boo has his blind. So he's saying, Woo, on your timing, bro. We can get ready to go. So they don't know about Patty. They're going to get ready to fight this back here. Blind's going to come through. He goes one second early, but Patty gets the trade. Two for one here. Haodong is revealed in vent and the bomb is down. Benji has the space, he's totally fine, and everyone has swarmed this bomb. Look at this. They're just taking it from you. They're just walking at you. They're playing like they have the advantage. Overwhelming Smoggy. Overwhelming Haodong. And Chichu's left in a 1v4 again, and isn't able to convert it. Really nice job from Heretics. Something to pay attention to. At the end of the day, sometimes people can just have rounds. And when a team <laughs> is up like this, 5 to 1, you know, it's like pay attention to like the economy, like investment here. You know, it's pretty like bare bones with EG winning this last round for Heretics. Okay, a lot of, a lot of like, a lot of money on the line here where, you know, if you lose this round, you're not going to have much. Same as I think for EDG, okay, not a lot available. So when you lose a round to a moment like this, it's just so painful knowing that you did the right thing. Okay, you, you know, you scaled properly, you were in position to capitalize, but someone just does something insane. And Wu is just constantly showing up for moments like this. Doing the kind of like Mata classic of jumping the rocket, 
end up getting a trade. 180 trade, 180 trade. I mean, he's just spinning around. He's like a Beyblade in a little arena, just bouncing off the walls, killing everybody. Smog, he's now left in the 1v3. He's going to get the first, pick up the bomb, and try to plant. Again, we use ults to win rounds. Good job by Heretics picking this out. And here is that Gladiator protocol we talked about, right? So another example of it. Seven seconds on the clock, takes four to plant. He's going to get ran at on his first tap here. He has to get off or he's going to die, right? It's, it's not like he could have stuck this because he would have died and they would have defused. But now, there's not enough time to plant. So Benji doesn't have to fight. He's just going to immediately run away and he's going to win the round because of it. So that's what we're talking about, how, how to play the clock in that advantage situation. On behalf of some great individual moments, good fundamentals, using alts to win rounds, managing your real economy on top of your alt economy, we now have the op being brought out with Team Heretics, just streak of dominance continuing here, just owning EDG on their own map pick. Wolf's going to come out. Kong Kong, a little anxious here, right? Just like really, which wants to get active. He just wants to get involved. He's going to get caught off before the Trailblazer is going to ping. You know, something that just unfortunately is like unacceptable. You got to be locked in round by round by round. Doesn't matter how high up you are or how down low you are in terms of the amount of rounds that you have here. Easy first blood for Wu. Scaling's going to pull up. Okay, Paranoia is going to be used. Wall's going to deny all that space. Now they're going to have nothing for the bomb site other than his flash that doesn't get a ping. Here they go in Benji Fishy's maze. He's just in the box fight now. He's just sitting around just flicking people that are getting close to him. Benji for one, Ryan's with two. Woot kills, or sorry, Woot dies on one HP to Haodong here, who is left in a 1v4. I mean, how many times have we talked about a situation like this so far, like in this series, where the number situation is just so well managed by Team Heretics against EDG on Sunset and Split. They're just, they're just smothering them. Like, there's just nothing you can do. There's nowhere you can go. There's nowhere you can play. Like, they're playing lights out. Last round we're going to showcase from this series here comes from the Attacker Pistol, or the Team Heretics Attacker Pistol. Um, breaking down specifically what a count is. This is one of the most important things that you need to understand as a defender. You need to call out numbers. We're never saying it's A, it's B. We're talking about number one, how many agents are there, right? And we can count that through utility. Each agent also makes a unique footstep. Every one of them is different, okay? It's worth learning. You could find out how many people are on you and what that means to your team and what they can do because of it. Also, the main thing we want to pay attention to as well is the utility being used, right? What utility is being used? That's another way to get a count. Did they sky flash Omen Blind with a raised satchel? Okay, that's three people, right? Like mid and B is weak. You know, you can move over here to help me or something like that. Wait, it's just a sky wolf. Hold on. You know, we're fine over here. We can like still delay. There's no pressure. Okay, developing that is really important. Now, we're going to see that not come out here from EDG. And a, and a, and a, like an offensive, defensive smoke is going to be used here um, from uh, Smoggy to reinforce this A bomb site. They want you to waste utility uh, getting up ramp or getting out through the smoke so these guys can have an easier time holding the site. And then we're operating in a 2 one two kind of like setup here, which is a little kind of like site heavy. Um, that, that I expected. So Ryan's is going to throw a flash. It's going to get no pings. He's then going to wolf with the wall going up. Look at the rotations here. Chichu running out of vent. Smoggy making sound keys like he's rotating. They've done nothing. They've done nothing. Why on earth? Why on earth would a player flash top ramp against an aggressive smoke? And it got no pings, and then he wolfs. How does that make any sense? He didn't get a ping. So if his teammates were there, they probably would have taken the space at the wall up, right? Because there's no possibility for someone being aggro. Again, not really sure how we're getting caught off by stuff like this. When, when they're up 10-2, to two, teams with momentum will tend to fake. They'll tend to fuck with you. They'll play the mind games. They're going to get a uncontested entry here. The blind is going to go out onto the help and not on Woot. Woot's angling out here. Haodong's going to get cucked. Smoggy's going to go one for one here. Chichu flooding out gets one. 3v3 situation now. Nice sight orb here from Patty. 
The nade has now been used. The tap comes out trying to force the reaction, which is perfect because he, the satchel play happens. Kong Kong gets dinked and then caught out. Reigns with a nice kill. He's going to get another trade here. 2v1 situation. Chi Chi makes this really close. But look at Team Heretic just playing together here. Just right on top of each other, making sure they can get that trade. So well done. And Team, or sorry, EDG just not on the same page whatsoever. I think the main thing that kind of like was difficult for uh, EDG in this series were the maps. Uh, I think Breeze, they kind of had like the chance to close it if they ended up winning one of these two. But giving a, a team like Heretic Sunset and Split this early is just very, uh, very, very problematic. Um, so I think they were able to run into that game super, super easily. Nice performance here from Woot, really. 280R, nine first kills, really hard to deal with. You know, Benji, Ryan's are consistent performers. You know, Patty, Boo playing like like the support and like still doing like a good job. Again, a lot of individual moments where at the end of the day, there's really nothing you could do. Okay, all these crazy multi kills that were happening. Their alts were always online. Their eco was always good. They played back to back defensive halves and they ran away with both of them. So again, how important it is to be able to convert the bonus, right? How important it is to be able to understand how to retake. Again, here we go. Converting another bonus. Retake, retake, retake win. All these all these wins where these guys are just saving. They don't even get to play. Okay, it's just very easy to snowball this out of control. And again, Team Heretics now have eliminated or have beaten every Chinese team at Master Shanghai. So kind of just like a funny thing there. Uh definitely, you know, unfortunate. I think EDG is like a great team, but uh, I, I think that they just really need to kind of like iron out um, like their approach depending on like the team that they're going up against. Uh, I don't really, I'm not sure how often they ban Lotus. That's still like a pretty good ban against Heretics, but I think picking Split was their kind of like mistake here. Um, not really sure what their other option was. Don't have like a too great of a read on this team, but you know it is what it is, and they just set Team Heretics up to beat them. So now. We take a look at this again recording not on the day that this match happened so we kind of have like some spoilers team heretics move up to g2 here and they're actually going to lose and they're going to go back down to lowers and they're going to have to play a team from their own region in foot right and then after that they're going to be playing the winner of 100 of these paper x so this lower bracket obviously is fucking stacked uh, i'm very surprised that gen g and g2 are in the upper final here i did not expect it to be that i expected g2 uh 100 thieves but gen g has impressed me they've be in two great teams from the other region and uh you know I, I, I'm, I'm very surprised to say the least they're they're on pace or sorry they've taken down two number one seeds so far and you know they really have like the potential like momentum to keep going here they absolutely did not deserve to win this uh game against fanatic but against 100 thieves they fucking played lights out and we're going to be able to highlight that uh soon on this channel so thank you everyone for tuning in i really appreciate it again the sport has been so overwhelming uh please continue to let me know about things that i can be doing better in the comments things that you want to see recommend me any game you want to watch things you see on the screen my mic whatever it is i, I i'm still ironing out my sound and everything like that uh, all that is really appreciated uh, and again, I thank everybody here for, you know, subscribing, and helping me out. And if you haven't done that already, you know, like and subbing on the video is going to be really good to help me out and make, help me grow. I also stream on Twitch. You can open the description, check all the links down there, Instagram, Twitter, everything like that. I post short form content on TikTok. And if you want to get better at the game, you can join my Discord uh, where you can see my Valorant coaching options and you can follow along with me as well. But other than that, I'm out of here. Deuces.